The plan for this video is to get the onboard LED flash in. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got it plugged in now, but I'm going to unplug it and show the entire process. The first thing I'm going to do is go to Raspberry Pi Pico 2 MicroPython. So simply Google Pico 2 UF2 and scroll down, you'll see the MicroPython one. There is one for Circuit Python as well, but I'm not going to be using that one. I'm going to go to MicroPython Pico 2W, click on that. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to the latest release, which was the 15th of the 4th, 2025. So not too long ago. I'm going to click on that one. It's going to download the file I need. So what I need to do now is to go to my downloads folder on my PC. So let me minimize this. I know I've shown this already, but I'm showing the full process again, just in case anyone wants to jump in at this point. So I'm going to unplug this. What I am going to do is hold down the single button on the Raspberry Pi Pico 2, W, press and hold that button down. And while I'm plugging this cable in, keep the button held down. Perfect, there we go. And on my screen, as you can see, it pops up with another window. I need to drag that file into here. So on the left hand, let me just do this instead. On the left hand side, I've got my downloads folder. On the right hand side, I've got my Raspberry Pi Pico 2W. All I need to do is to drag this file here from this location to here. You can also copy and paste it. So you can click on it. You can do control C to copy from this location. Click on this white space here, then do control V to paste it. Or some people like to right click. I don't prefer right clicking, so you can right click you can go to where it says copy here right click over here in a blank white space then go to paste whichever way you choose works i'm going to do control c for copy then control v for paste because that's the way i'm used to i'm going to control c here then control v here once this finishes transferring it will close that window on the right hand side and then i should be okay to use my raspberry pi pico 2 using micro python perfect we heard the disconnection sound and we saw that window close as well so everything should should be good to go i'm going to unplug this and plug it back in just to make sure unplugged plugging it back in if i can see because i'm blind plug back in i'm going to open my thunny ide so let's open thunny just make sure it's been on the bottom right corner here i'm going to choose where it says MicroPython. i'm going to leave it as that is even though it says rp2040 this is the one for the raspberry pi 2 and i can go back and double check on the website if i scroll all the way up it does say pico 2 w so that's raspberry pi pico 2 and the wi-fi version is a w the next step is to program this now so i remember most of this from when i did it back in the past so I know that I can do from machine import pin. I believe that needs to be capital. Um, then I need to do import time as well. I know that import time. So what this is going to do, this is going to tell us that we can use the pin library. Oh, I can't do tab. This is going to tell us that we can use the pin library on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to put a comment here. Use the pin library on the Pi Pico 2. This one is going to allow us to import time. Okay, my tab doesn't work on my keyboard, so I have to keep pressing space. Allows us to use sleep function. And then down here, I'm going to tell it what the LED pin is. So again, I'm going to be flashing the onboard LED on here. If you have a Raspberry Pi, the original one, the Raspberry Pi Pico, the original one, it would be pin 25. So where I do LED equals, I can say pin, and in here, it would be 25 if you were using the old Raspberry Pi Pico. But for the new one, they changed it to simply say LED. Then I can say comma pin dot out, I think, pin dot out. Yep, there we go, pin dot out. After this, I can use a while loop or I can use a normal loop. I'm gonna be using a while loop just so I can have it run forever. That just makes sense for this scenario. But please look at loops, look at for loops, look at while loops and look at statements that you can just run once as well. All right, after that, I'm going to do while true. This is a thing in Python, by the way. While true, and then I'm going to say LED value one. So I'm going to turn the LED on first. So LED dot value, uh, put that as one. That's how we turn the LED on. And to turn the LED off, we simply say LED dot value zero. So I'm going to put that straight away. LED dot value equals zero. Now, before we do anything, when we think about this, right, the Raspberry Pi Pico runs at i think it was 150 megahertz that's 150 million times per second so if i hit run on this program what's going to happen is we probably won't even see it turn on and off it will just be off because our eyes cannot simply move that fast so what we will have to do is to turn it on here then wait for a period of time so that's why we imported time i'm going to wait for about half a second so i'm going to say time dot sleep and then in brackets i'm going to put 0 0.5 oh i said one second didn't i so let's just put one for now that's one second. So I'm going to turn the LED on, let it stay on. So let the system sleep for one second, turn the LED off, then let the system sleep for another one second. So time dot, oh, not out zone, time dot sleep, 
put one in here again, and then it will simply keep redoing this every single time. This while true means that once there is electricity, once the system hasn't been destroyed, I will keep doing this section of program forever and ever and ever. So if I click run on here now, the play button here, I'm using funny. If I click play on here, what we should have is the, I'll bring this closer. That's the LED there flashing. One, two, turns on for a second, stays on for a second and goes off and stays off for one second as well. But I'm going to change this code. Actually, let me turn this light off. We don't need the light for this. I'm going to change the code so that it, rather than sleeping for one second, it sleeps for 0 0.5. So that's half a second, 0 0.5 there. 0.5 here and I'm going to click run again and if we can see it is flashing faster. I'm going to drop this down again to 0.25 so it goes twice as fast again so just dividing by two each time. And let's put 0.25, click play and again we can see that flashing super fast. Let's change this one more time down to 0.1 then we'll leave it there probably. 0.1, click play and again flashing really really quickly there. So this is 10% of a second and we can still see it. Whatever code I make for the Raspberry Pi Pico I will make it available on the website so just go there and grab it. So while true this is an infinite infinite loop, infinite, if I can spell, infinite loop, this will run forever, this, oh my gosh, this will run forever, so as long as we have power, led.value simply tells us to turn the LED on, the next one was time.sleep 0.1, sleep for x, I'm going to just put x here, x seconds, turn the LED off, turn the LED off, and then this one again, sleep for X seconds, sleep for X seconds. There we go. That's it. So that's how we control the internal LED of a Raspberry Pi Pico 2. It's exactly the same as a Raspberry Pi Pico 1. The only difference is rather than putting LED here, you put simply 25. I remember that from when I did it years ago. So pin 25 on the original Raspberry Pi Pico is going to be 25. And the LED pin on this one is simply LED in quotes. And that's it. You're done. I wanted to show this very last step, how to save a file to your PC and also how to save a file directly on the Raspberry Pi. So if I go to file here at the top and I can go to save or I can simply click on this diskette icon here, the save icon, I'm going to click on that. It's going to come up with this window here that's asking me where I want to save it. I'm going to choose my PC first and save it as a normal Python file. Then after I've done that, I'm going to save it on the Raspberry Pi Pico as well. So I'm going to go to this PC. I'm going to click on downloads for now and I'm going to call this one 01 LED flash. I'm going to click save and that saves it on my computer. So I can open my downloads folder here and I can go to here and I can see the file I just saved. Not very useful if you want it to be on the Raspberry Pi. You can transfer them at some point. However, you might as well save. I'm going to be saving every program I do on my Pi Pico and on my PC as well. So to save it on your PC, you go to file, you go to save again. I'm going to do something slightly different because I've already saved it. So I'm going to go to file, save as, then I'm going to choose Raspberry Pi Pico here. When this See, that just told me I have to stop the program first, then I can go to file, then I can go to save as, then I can choose Raspberry Pi Pico, then it will allow me to save it. So again, I'm gonna go to file, save as, Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm gonna put zero one in here. I'm gonna put flash internal LED, and then I'm gonna click okay. Please keep in mind, at the very end of your Python programs, you're supposed to have dot py. I'm gonna leave this off for now, just so I can show you that the system does actually check for this. I'm gonna click okay. It's supposed to save it, but what it's asking me, do I want to make it a .py file instead? I'm just going to click yes. And once I've done that, I can see my program in the top left side of my window here. And then I'm going to shut everything down. Let me just close Thunny, unplug my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to plug it back in. Then I'm going to reopen my Thunny. Where's my Thunny here? Reopen it. Make sure it's connected down there. Yes. And on the left hand side here, I can see the program I just wrote. Now, if I double click on that, it just comes up with everything I did before. That's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. More stuff incoming.